Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 4 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In our previous videos, we discussed about how to create your first Azure Data Factory and we also navigated within Azure Data Factory and understood where we can see what element. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the key components of Azure Data Factory. All right, guys. So the first key component within Azure Data Factory is nothing but the pipeline itself. Now, what is a pipeline? Pipeline is a logical grouping of activities that perform a specific unit of work. If I show you directly on the Azure Data Factory, now let me close this what is already open. Now, if you go back to the author mode and under author mode, if you see these factory resources option, under this, you will first find an option that says pipeline itself. Now I can click on this and click on create a new pipeline. Alternatively, we can click on this plus icon, click on pipeline and then click pipeline. Now it will add a new space where we can drag and drop any activity. Now, if we are adding multiple activities in a logical order, which are going to perform a unit of work, that combination itself will be called as a pipeline. Now, don't worry uh, about the details right now we will cover everything step by step and we will create our own pipeline now talking about the next key component is nothing but the activities activity is a single processing step in the pipeline so for example here right now within a pipeline within this working area i dragged one activity this this activity performs a copy task and this is a single unit that we can call an activity there are three different types of activities available or supported within Azure Data Factory right now. One is data movement, data transformation, and the last one is the control activities. We will cover each type of activity once we will create our pipelines and we will discuss the difference. Now, uh, there is no such category listed here. However, based on the you know type of work they do based on their behavior, these three categories are created for these activities. All right, so the next set of key components is data sets and linked services. Let's first talk about what is linked services. Linked services define the required connection information needed for Azure Data Factory to connect to the external resources such as data source. Now, what does it mean is, let's say for a moment in this copy activity, we are going to perform a copy of data from blob storage or from a SQL server SQL database to some other location. Now, in order to configure this activity, we will have to provide the SQL server or SQL database connection details to the Azure Data Factory. Now, that connection detail itself are provided in form of linked services. Now, don't worry how to create and all, we'll just go step by step and create our linked services and we'll see how can we uh, pass the connection details in the linked services. Now, talking about the data sets, data sets are nothing but the actual point of reference of the data so for example uh, as i mentioned here let's say we are assuming uh, that we are going to copy data from sql database to some other location so linked services was pointing to that db as a connection information however data set will directly point to that particular table from which we want to copy the data it says these points to or reference to the data that you want to use in the activity as either input or output. So whenever we are performing any activity, then we need to provide a input link services. We need to provide an input data set. And similarly, we need to provide an output data set and similarly an output link services. Next set of activities are data flows and integration runtime. Let's first talk about data flows. The data flows are actually a special category of activities available within Azure Data Factory. Now, uh, what is special about these data flows are, uh, with help of data flows, data engineers can develop data transformation logics without needing to write the code. Also, these activities, uh, you know, use a scaled out Apache Spark cluster in the background. What does it mean is, whenever we are running data flows in the background, they utilize the Apache Spark cluster to perform the job. Now, don't worry if you don't know the PySpark or, you know, other languages right now, you don't, don't need to know to run these data flows. All it does in the background, it uses the Apache Spark cluster 
that can be automatically scaled out as per the requirement. If I take you back to the Azure Data Factory, and if I search for data flows, I can drag it here. Right now, it will appear as a cop as a simple copy activity or something like that. But if I go into the settings and click on new, it will open a new UI, a new kind of UI itself. Here we can add new source and you know do a whole lot of operations. We'll cover all this in details, but uh, all you need to know is right now this is a different category of activities. And when we perform these data flows in the background, it uses Apache Spark cluster. Now coming back to the pipeline, and let's talk about integration runtime. Now integration runtime, if I uh, summarize it in a one sentence, it's nothing but the compute infrastructure. So whatever operations we are performing on the Azure Data Factory, let's say we are performing a copy activity, we are doing data movement, or we are doing some creating variables, or any any operation that we are performing within a pipeline that requires a compute power and integration runtime is the you know uh, resource that provided provides that compute power so in azure data factory an integration runtime provides a bridge between the activities and linked services so uh, where we can see that if i go to the monitor tab under that if you click on integration runtime you will notice we it, it, this integration runtime is automatically created by azure itself we haven't created any integration runtime this one is automatically created by azure data factory so that if we perform any copy activity or any movement or any operation this integration runtime will provide the compute power in the background now we'll uh, in our upcoming videos we'll talk about what are the other types of integration runtime available and how can we create a new integration runtime within azure data factory all right guys that's all for the part four of azure data factory key components i hope you like the content please do hit the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that i upload it really helps to make more videos on this if you have any questions then please feel free to reach out me at achievers data engineering at gmail.com or please do let me know in the comments if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.